Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I wanna to share with you another top 10 list. This is gonna be the top 10 folding knives that I would choose if I could only choose 10 for the rest of my life. Somebody actually messaged me about this on Instagram and they said, hey, I got an idea for a top 10 video. Um, you know, what would you choose? Like if you could only choose 10 for the rest of your life, but they have to be available. And I'm guessing that <laughs> it's because when I make top 10 lists and I include knives that you can't get, people get really upset with me. So that's understandable. So imagine a scenario where somebody just hypothetically takes all of my knives away and says, hey, you can pick 10. But those are the only 10 that you can have for the rest of your life. They have to be knives that you've experienced before, right? Even if you don't own them, right? If I could go out and just choose 10 knives that are actually available at retailers right now, and those are the only 10 that I could have for the rest of my, my life, what would they be? So that's the criteria here. Those are the parameters. Every single, because they are all available, every single knife that's on this list uh, will actually be listed right down in the description so you guys can check them out if you want to. What's the reason for this list? I don't know. I like doing top 10 lists and you guys seem to like to watch them, right? So that's that's why. These are fun for me um, and uh, they seem to be entertaining. So that's what we're doing here. Thanks so much to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. If you'd like to get your hands on some cool stickers and some other benefits, there's of course a link right down in the description uh, to support me in the world to me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Number 10, of course, let's get this one out of the way. How many times have I said that? Started off a top 10 list with an XM18 and said, let's get this out of the way. You guys know. The XM18, I cannot live without this knife. <laughs> that sounds really dramatic, but it, yeah, if I had to, I mean like uh, obviously in this scenario, the price is not a factor. And I, it might surprise you how many knives on this list are not overly extravagant. There's, I mean, I'm, we're not talking multi-thousand dollar knives here. We're talking about, for me, when I think about the knives that I wanna keep with me for the rest of my life, it's the ones that bring me a feeling of you know general joy and happiness, but also, that function as tools, as uh, reliable tools, right? The XM18, uh, three and a half inch now with the uh, triway pivot system uh, and all that stuff, you know, be, being able to switch out the internals, you know, on the fly, being uh, titanium frame lock, easy to manipulate, right? It has everything that I like. Now, what we have here is a picture of a Bowie, and that's uh, because, you know, to let people know that the Bowie just got released, even though the Bowie Gen 6 is not available right now, I imagine more will be coming. I will link XM18s down in the description. If I could pick only one blade shape for the rest of my life, because Hinder has a lot of blade shapes, probably the Harpoon Spanto. But this was a nice picture, and I haven't used it before, so there you go. The XM18, 100% on the list. This is an expensive knife coming in at base at about $425. I've owned many of them. They are they are hyper recommendable. If you're going to spend that much money on a knife, the XM18 is definitely a great knife uh, to do that. Uh, moving on here, yeah, the Spyderco Shaman. I, I know, I mean, like this this knife has seen two price bumps. I I have an infinite love for this knife, and I've actually multiple times used mine and another person. Somebody lent me one in Rex 45 to use. I've used the Shaman for you know multiple times uh, for extended periods of time. And it just works. It just, I mean, it sounds silly to say it just wants to go to work, right? I mean, that's a cliche thing to say about knives. The Shaman really feels good. This has got kind of strider ergos. The blade shape is robust, but at the same time, it's pretty good at continuous cutting. It's fully, well, it's not fully flat ground, but nearly fully flat ground. Uh, that nice sort of big, robust leaf shaped blade that Spyderco uses. Um, and then the contoured handles. I mean, I've talked about the Shaman a million times. I fell in love with this thing the moment that I opened it up two years ago. How long ago was that when I unboxed the Shaman? Two years ago? Yeah, I've still got the same Shaman. That will never, that'll never go away. And by the way, some of the knives on this list I don't own right now, so it's blasphemy. But when you sit down and think about this, right? If you sit down and make your own list, there's probably knives that you feel like you can't live without that you don't own, that you, you previously owned, right? If you're somebody, I mean, for new people or people who just own one knife, you know, maybe not so much, but like if you're in this knife enthusiast world, you likely own multiple knives and there are knives that you've let go of that you might really wish that you had back because in this specific scenario, you might think, I, I don't know if I could live without that one if I could only choose 10. So the Shaman is with me right now, but I got a couple on this list that are that I don't own and that I would definitely pick back up if these were the, uh, the perimeters here. Um, but anyways, yeah, Spyderco Shaman. Uh, on top of that, easy to take down. It's got the T8 hardware. 
Uh, it's a compression lock. I mean, there's just a million things to love. The only thing that I don't love about it, honestly, is just the, the style of clip. <laughs> Fortunately, mine has the MXG clip on it, which I highly recommend. But yeah, that one definitely be on the list. Moving on here, the Combat True Nine. Look, I, I wouldn't be able to go forever without an OTF. And if I had to choose one OTF, as, as much as I love the Direct Delta, I think it probably is the all-around best design. When it came down to like my feeling of just how much joy I have for the object... I, the funny thing is, is I, it's not, I can't explain it. It's the X factor with the combat true on. Maybe it's because it's more robust. Uh, maybe it's, you know, just the sound that I don't know. The combat true on, I think is the one that I would want to keep. These are expensive. By the way, the shaman's about 200 bucks right now. Uh, combat true on comes in at about, I think it's either 465 or 485 right now, but this is the, this is the OTF that I would want to keep with me for the rest of my life. Um, I, uh, mine's a hellhound. That's probably the one that I'd keep. Um, but uh, they've got a bunch of different blade shapes, a bunch of different blade finishes. They use M390, 204P, which is an analog of M390, and then uh, LMAX generally. It's got the glass breaker, right? We're not thinking necessarily end of the world scenario here either. It's just for the rest of my life, right? Whether I would use it for a lot of stuff or just a few things, it's just this is what I'd want to keep in an infinite number of circumstance, uh, circumstances. Whatever the rest of my life consists of doesn't really matter. Uh, for you know it's not really the foundation of this list it's which ones would i you know like my my instinct my gut reaction which do i want to keep the combat true it on <laughs> no questions asked moving on here this is a this is a surprise one that i put on the list this is another one much like the shaman where the moment that i unboxed it i i locked into it um this is this thing is huge uh, uh, well, the first time i saw this i looked at it and i was like it's probably eight, eight and a quarter inches overall. It's probably, you know, 140 thousandths on the spine. It's probably a variation of the American Lawman. No, this thing is gigantic. This would be, I would keep this solely to have a massively hard use knife, like a, a survival. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people are like, why didn't you include any fixed blades on this list? Cause this is a, cause the list is folding knives. <laughs> it just is what it is. Um, but uh, if I had to choose only folding knives, right? And I, the part of me that wants something that is, ultra mega capable that you could do pretty much anything with yeah the sr1 um has a lot of cold steel knives have that element to them but as far as like the feeling and the ergonomic lines and just every all oh, when everything all the planets align and i get everything that i want right and if i if i could like build a cold steel a perfect cold steel knife in my head that had the ultra robust features like some of the mega overbuilt cold steel knives the uh the sr1 is definitely the one that i'd pick up and i would pick up i have the light i own it i'd probably let that go and i just get the g10 and s35 vn just because it makes me feel like i've got the completed the total the the best version of it right even if i do think the light one is probably a much better bang for your buck yeah the s35 vn and g10 variant wish this came in black g10 i'd go with that but it doesn't it comes in od green they come in two blade shapes uh tanto and um the clip point the tanto for whatever reason is 210 dollars, and the clip point is uh 160 i just pick up the, the clip point yeah uh this is definitely something that i would want to have around forever i'm sure this list is subject to change guys i handle so many knives all the time right i'm constantly making new top 10 lists I'm sure it is. But as of this moment, right, the SR1 and G10 and S35EN. It's a weird one. Uh, the Riot Epoch. Um, <laughs> this is probably my favorite. This is like Riot's Hinderer XM18. Um, and it's also one of the best value knives in Riot's line right now. Uh, you're getting a Timascus inlay on a titanium uh, frame lock. It's got a nice backspacer, 204P steel. Ridiculously smooth. Guillotine smooth. This is like hinders Riot doppelganger uh it's really it's, it's such a sad it's very similar to the feeling that i get with the hinder xm18 um and I, I can't tell you it's it's all the little teeny tiny things that come together it's partially because it reminds me of the xm18 and also just because it's a really well designed knife it has that meaty robustness about it um it's somewhat thin behind the edge but it just has that nice kind of simple aesthetic the simple flow of the lines but then it's got a lot of little tiny details that i really appreciate i don't know you know this is one of the plainest knives on the list and, and it is just another titanium frame lock of which there are multiple on this list but 
for whatever reason, the maybe the the plainness and the, the slight complexity that may, maybe it's just the little Timascus in. I don't know. I've always had a special place in my heart for the uh, Riyadh Epoch. And I, the fact that you can get them for like 350 bucks right now, which by the way, in this hypothetical scenario, nobody gave me a price limit, right? I'm sure people are like, why wouldn't you buy it? You know, there are $4,000 knives that are available, right? Because I, I don't know, like I'm, I'm thinking about how, how quickly the novelty of something wears off and how likely I am to use it for one reason or another, right? And it just, the reason that I've fallen back into this sweet spot, you know, if any of you have heard me talk about this, I've handled knives that cost two, $3,000 and I, I appreciate them, but my where i where i find the most enjoyment out of the knives that i pick up is somewhere around the you know maybe the 300 to 600 dollar range maybe a little bit under or over in some cases but when i think about the knives that i love the most in the price range that i love the most right without being able to put a finger on it just a raw emotional response the riad epoch i just really like it it's not a new knife it's not anything ultra special i just really I like it. I think it's a good value considering you get uh, Riot's um, quality, fit and finish, the guillotine action, all that, and, and premium materials, right? For the money, yeah, definitely. There's lots of titanium frame locks out there that use the same materials. They don't feel like they don't feel like Riot's or some of the other frame locks on this list. Moving on here, yeah, I'd have to have a side opener. If I, if I was gonna uh, have a side, op I'm sorry, I'd have to have a side opening automatic. I wouldn't be able to live without a side opening automatic. So which side opening automatic? Well, it's gonna be ProTech. Because if you've heard me, I'm sure a lot of you have heard me say this before, Protec makes the best side opening automatic knives on the planet, hands down. There's a lot of other companies that make good ones, Protec makes the best ones. Amidst everything that Protec makes, I'd have to go with the SNG. The auto SNG, doesn't matter what variant you pick up, I'd have to have one of these. I, I own one right now, one in full titanium, and I don't think I'll ever let that thing go. God, I love this knife. Some of them come with safety, some of them don't. Some of them have knurling on the handles like you're seeing here. Some of them don't. Some of them are different colors, different. Uh, so they've even got crazy ones with blade, different blade grinds, and there's mirror polish ones. All oh my gosh, I there's a there's a big part of me would have a, a you know let's say that the actual Strider SNG was readily available. I have a hard time choosing between that and the auto version. I I'm sorry, that's just how I feel. I just for whatever reason. This knife translates so well as an automatic knife, and then once it's deployed, you have Strider Ergos and uh, Strider uh, Blade Geometry and just the comfort of a Strider knife. This is a fun fidget knife, and it's also something that is definitely a fantastic user. You can pick this up right now. They're starting to become a little bit more available. I, like I said, it's the same case with the, all these knives on the list. I will link this one down below. Love this knife. Couldn't live without it. Moving on here. Yeah, the Para 3. Um, this, it's because this knife, I've carried it, it's right here actually in my hand. Um, I've, I've carried this knife more than any other knife that I have ever owned. My wife gave me this knife for our anniversary, mine's in Maximum. Um, I, uh, I wouldn't be able to live without it at this point because it, it's basically just an extension of my person. My, my, uh, mind, body, and spirit are so synced up with the Spyderco Para 3. Um, it's just, it's like the go-to, I, I mean, I still will grab this knife without even thinking about it as I go out the door because it fits in so many different scenarios. It's such an easy knife to manipulate. It's got great blade geometry for a number of different things. It's smaller, more compact than some of the knives that I have on this list. I just really, really like this. It's, it, go, it goes really well with my hand too. It's a smaller knife that really works out for people who have like medium large to much large, like even if you've got um, a really big hand, there's still enough handle room on this thing to be able to comfortably manipulate it. And because of the height of the blade and where they positioned that thumb hole, you know, even if you have like big, you know, you know, catcher's mitt hands, you still can manipulate this thing with one hand pretty easily. My dad, for example, has the, he's been working construction his whole life uh, and his hands just look like clown hands. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> but I handed this thing to him, and he's like, oh, yeah, I love this. It's so easy to, you know, manipulate. And it's got the compression lock, too. So, yeah, uh, pair of three, I'd have to have it. Couldn't live without it. Moving on here. But you already have the XM18. Why do you need the... the because I love, I love this knife. I love the XM18 more than the Zero Tolerance 0562. But this was my first... This is a nostalgic need. This was like my true, not necessarily the initial gateway folder, but this was the one that really set it off. This knife is the reason that you guys are watching this channel right now. If it wasn't for this knife, I think I would have gone down a completely, I'm not saying I wouldn't have continued to be in folding knives, 
but I would have gone down a different path. This knife shaped my taste. Like this was, this was probably 80% of the uh, solidifying foundation for my interest in this hobby. It's the reason I got into hinderer knives. It's the reason that a lot of the knives on this list look and function similarly. Not all of them, but you guys are kind of picking up on my tastes, I'm sure. This knife is the reason that I ultimately created the YouTube channel. It, it threw my fascination with folding knives just into, like it, it launched it into space. Um, yeah, I'd have to have it. Even if it is almost exactly the same thing as the XM18, I'd have to have it. These titanium variants uh, come in at uh, $280. They've got the carbon fiber ones for 260. Yeah, definitely. By the way, the Para 3 is 145 right now, something like that. They'll all be down there in the description. Um, anyways, moving on here. Yeah, the Cold Steel American Lawman. Um, uh, kind of for the same reason as the SR1, but this, this thing is such a straightforward tool. Um, it's a little bit easier to carry than the SR1. Might not be quite as durable and, and mainly just... The lock is arguably just as durable because it's the same lock, just in different dimensions. The blade geometry is different than uh, the SR1. It's shorter, it's thinner, it's got a different grind, right? This would be like if I just wanted to have the triad lock but carry something that was a little smaller, a little more compact, and a little bit better behind the edge. I don't know. It's just I can't imagine a me in the knife world like existing and still enjoying knives. I can't imagine that happening without the American Lawman. I would be really sad. I think a good way to think about this list is like 10 knives that I would be really pissed off about if they were suddenly gone. Like I would almost be depressed if any of the knives on this list were just gone and completely unobtainable, right? I mean, if it came down to it, I could only have 10. I don't I don't want to be without the American Lawman. I just like it. It's not an overly expensive knife. It's not an overly extravagant knife. It's just a really, really good knife and a really good tool. It doesn't bring me joy aesthetically. It doesn't, there's no fidget factor. It's just like, ah, ah that's such a good tool. I just, I don't want, I don't want to, you know, be, I don't want to have to live in a world without the American Lawman. <laughs> I'm being really dramatic here. Moving on here, yeah, I gotta admit, I really like the Praetorian. Um, now, the Praetorian tie, I mean, honestly, if the bigger, thicker one, if it was readily available all the time, that's probably the one that I would go with, but it's truthfully, it's just not. I mean, we're moving away. I mean, we, could, we went through kind of a weird phase where everybody kind of, for a little bit, kind of was interested in the overbuilt stuff, and now I feel like we're teetering back out of that, but this is still massively overbuilt. The T is 187 thousandths on the spine and 135 thousandths on the tie, where, where the actual Praetorian tie is uh, a quarter inch on the stock and uh, three sixteenths on the titanium. Um, but, you know, if I, I mean, if I was thinking about stuff I wouldn't want to go without, um, even if I couldn't find a massively practical application for this, I just don't want to not have it. I, I'm comfortable right now in the idea that I could pick this back up if I wanted to, but if it came down to it, I'd be like, ah, I have to find a Praetorian T. I just have to, I, I don't want to not have one of those. It's ridiculous. It's heavy. It's super tall. It's a pocket hog. It's, it's, just, it's more of just the craziness of what this thing is. The ultimate form that it takes is just wild. I, I love this. I've always been attracted to this knife, right? It's just the knife itself, not, you know, anything else around, just the knife itself is what draws me in. I just really think it's cool. I'd probably look just like this in S35VN with the uh, compound ground, the Tanto, right? It's just, that's the one I'd want. And uh, guys, we've actually come to the end of the list. Um, I thought I had one more. <laughs> <laughs> it's why I had that weird, it sounded like I was transitioning or building up for the climax. No, I guess this was the, I couldn't remember what order I put these in. But yeah, these are the knives that I would want to pick up. And fortunately for you guys, hopefully this makes you all happy and everybody's okay with this. You can pick up, like I've said multiple times in this video, all of these knives in order right down in the description. Um, when you use my links and you purchase something, it actually benefits my channel. So I'd appreciate that. If not, that's okay too. I hope this video was at least mildly entertaining to you. If it was, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do of course have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that metal complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching everybody and have a great day.